Monsterverse Kaiju has some kind of epic ability, either a power, a physical traits, or something borderline supernatural. Today we're ranking every Monsterverse Kaiju's ultimate ability, their number one most special powerful attack, based on the damage it can do to the average Kong warrior. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, comment more ranking ideas down below, and let's get into it. Okay, so these are the kaiju of the Monsterverse, the biggest, most baddest epic ones. You'll notice even Abaddon's on there, the kaiju spider from the new upcoming game, just because we want to be thorough. The words written beneath their photo is their most special ability known to, like, the lore. If you guys have some arguments regarding this, let me know down below, but I'm pretty sure this is ridiculously thorough. Okay, first we've got Godzilla's atomic breath. As we saw in Godzilla vs. Kong, that beam just touching Kong's shoulder for a second burnt like hell. I feel like this would legitimately cut one of those monkeys in half like a lightsaber, dude. They're still just flesh. There's no atomic scaling armor of any kind on those monkeys. For cutting a monkey in half and absolutely disemboweling them effortlessly, this power shall go under God. These are the three selections, obviously, as, as you can see. Okay, next we have Shinomura, a very famous kaiju that only appears in the comics because the world is cruel. It'd be so amazing to get this in the movies, though. Shinomura, as long as she's exposed to radiation, can grow forever, can literally grow to the point where she blots out the sky, meaning that she can get big enough to destroy all those monkeys effortlessly without any issue. Because it has the ability to grow big enough into a comically giant kaiju that could just basically squash the planet, she will also go under God, because she's Shinomura, she's amazing. Okay, the Warbats. The Warbats special is Venom. There's like multiple attributes about this creature that are fantastic, but its overwhelming main ability is the, uh, the fact that it could inject 9,600 gallons of Venom with every bite. It also has the ability to spit Venom from its wings, but I feel like 9,000 gallons of Warbat Venom going into a monkey's bloodstream is a little bit more catastrophic. If that sucker bites a monkey, it's over, dude. Like, it's, it's kaputs. So once again, going up under God, which is actually, actually, hang on. But Kong's, I feel like in a one-on-one, -on -one would have a better chance against a Warbat. It is, it's honestly, the reason Kong lost that was because it was a two-on-one. -on -one. This is a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Obviously, those monkeys are a lot smaller as well, though, so it kind of splits even i'm just gonna go ahead and put warbats under demigod because if it bites dead monkey for sure but if if it bites Okay, Kong's ability to wield weapons. This one's silly because it's like Kong versus the other Kong species, which are much smaller and generally stupider. Kong with an axe could have marched in there and taken over the entire Kong species. The only reason Scar King was able to stop him was because of Shimo. Without Shimo, Kong would have freaking dominated all of them because of his epic ability to just wield weapons. I guess Scar King sort of has that too, but it's more known as, I don't know, Kong has consistently used various weapons since he was like a teenager on Skull Island, so it fits him better. Kong using his axe could kill all those hollow earth kongs effortlessly he's also going under god plus he's one of the main alpha kaiju <laughs> nuclear godzilla would vaporize those monkeys it'd actually be horrifying dude like monkeys being exposed to a flash of nuclear nuclear lights like that's <laughs> It's actually a kind of crazy concept. Once again, going under God. It's not looking good for the monkeys. Making Godzilla's proton scream, not always necessarily considered as strong as Godzilla's atomic breath. It did overpower Godzilla's atomic breath, but Godzilla was considered weaker after just having defeated Kong. But still, we saw that beam effortlessly cut through a skull crawler, and Kong flesh isn't much thicker than skull crawler flesh. If you're freaking being held to point blank atomic breath or proton scream, you're getting cut in half, unless you have some thick atomic scaling, which they don't. So our buddy's going back under God as well. Okay, the Drown Viper. It doesn't have many powers or anything. Really nothing. It's just a giant viper that drowns you. It's very self-explanatory in the name. The added ability it does have, though, like its best attribute is its radula. I think that's how you pronounce that. It's like barbed teeth along its tongue, specifically for holding its prey still while it does horrible things and rips flesh from bone. Now, this creature was 
easily subdued by Kong, but Kong's bigger and has his weapons. We're talking about hollow earth monkeys here. I feel like this dude against one single hollow earth monkey, it would have been a horrible disaster. Like a freaking anaconda grabbing a tiny monkey out of a tree, it would have been effortless. But there are ways the monkey can overpower it, I suppose. Like, they are still Kong species. They're just not as epic as the Kong we know and love. But for the sake of that, I'm going to put this under Demigod as well. The Drown Viper being a Demigod does seem kind of silly. But it might be the biggest thing in the MonsterVerse. If you think about it, like, it's freaking huge, dude. It towered over Kong. It, the, the, the biggest living thing in the MonsterVerse. So, it's just a stupid snake, but it's huge. Okay, Godzilla's supercharged pulse. That move was entirely an EMP, I'm pretty sure. Like, it has no physical damage to living things or structures. It disables electronics, but if you're a monkey, basically, it's it's not gonna do anything. This is really weird, but we're actually putting this power under just monster. It would negatively affect them, probably give them some kind of a headache because of, like, the electromagnetic brain waves or whatever, but it's not gonna do much. Okay, Abaddon's reanimation. This move is freaking horrifying, dude. Scariest move in the MonsterVerse by far. Pure nightmare fuel stuff. Like it, it has the ability to use its tiny spiders to get under the skin of its victims, either living or dead evidently in the lore. And they just basically control the body of its human victims, like having the humans do what they want. Being completely reanimated by tiny spiders controlling the muscle and, and bone structure. It's freaking horrifying dude i would love to see this in the movie so bad i don't know how diabolically epic this move is this reanimation move but i'm just going to assume she could definitely control like the full might of humanity to an extent meaning some serious issue for our monkey friends or does or do they just like grab sticks and poke are they like stupid zombies she controls it's not really a specified much in the lore it's just said they're reanimated and she controls them so i'm gonna go ahead and put under her under demigod because that's horrifying bro Okay, Behemoth, he's actually a big dumb idiot. <laughs> like, I love, I love the fact that we have a mammoth kaiju, but he never really does. He, like, destroys a couple of buildings in King of the Monsters. In the comics, he gets the crap kicked out of him, and Godzilla has to save him just because just he's good for the environment, bro. His poop grows rainforest. That's that's his whole thing. Wherever he goes, reforestation happens. Like, he's awesome, but he's too, uh, he's just too much of an animal. Behemoth kind of sucks. Going under monster. <laughs> Okay, Mothra's silk webbing works wonders on those monkeys, as we've seen. She was able to web down Monster Zero's head as well. I feel like in a one-on-one, -on -one, it'd be effortless. She would just web that monkey, fly down, and just kind of like drill him in the head with her butt. She may just be a moth, but she's a freaking warrior. But she's also a huge glass cannon. But either way, she's not as much of a monstrous threat, but she would be able to handle herself in a fight. She's going under Demigod. Okay, Muto Prime is so confusing. I remember one time, like the director, someone said on Twitter that Kong could kill Muto Prime. Prime, and it pissed me off so much at first, but it was like supposed to be some rock, paper, scissors thing. Prime kills Goji, Goji kills Kong, Kong kills Prime. So you got to imagine the monkeys would have a pretty good chance against this because Muto Prime's powers are supposed to be specifically anti-Goji, I'm pretty sure. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't care whatever any director or producer says on Twitter. That thing will destroy a monkey. Okay, Kamazots, the bat kaiju from the comics. Um, This creature does a number on Kong, like does a, a crap ton of damage to that monkey. It's freaking sonic screech is enough to like liquidize people if they get caught in the way of it. So it, it like destroys Kong's eardrums. It does a lot of horrible things. Kong was able to win, but barely. So you got to imagine a much smaller, weaker, less experienced monkey wouldn't have the same advantage. I think her screech would be enough to subdue one of those monkeys. And then she could just like finish it off with her giant tail that like wraps around and carries them up or something. I feel like Kamazots would get it done. So I'm going to go ahead and put Kamazots under Demigod as well.
Okay, Rodan's Thunderclap. It, it's it's like weird because his special listed isn't precisely something you could use against other kaiju. It seems like it's more just for getting him around quick and for causing a giant gust of wind that disrupts anything little messing with it. I freaking believe Rodan could eat 50 Kongs, no issue, but the video is about their special abilities and that special ability, unfortunately, isn't doing anything to those monkeys. Maybe send them back flying like 50 feet, but those monkeys are durable. This one's silly because <laughs> Scar, Scar King's special ability is listed as subjugation. Enslaving people. He enslaves people. And who does he enslave? Monkeys. So you got to imagine a monkey against like Scar King's subjugation. It's like his greatest weakness in the entire franchise. This one's easy. Going right under God. Okay, the skull crawler's barbed tail is actually amazing. Evidently, is how uh, Kong's dad died specifically. It was one of the barbed tails to the head. It's not the greatest thing, and against most kaiju, it would basically be nothing. It would do nothing to, against Godzilla, except maybe, like, scratch his balls a little bit. But against a monkey specifically, and not just a monkey, but a, a monkey smaller than Kong, there's ways a monkey could come out on top, as we saw in the Skull Island movie as well. But there's also ways the monkey could die, as we saw in Kong's uh, family tree. So I'm going to go ahead and put that barbed tail under Demigod, because there's ways that it could... Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Okay, Nikika is where it gets complicated because this move, Biovirulence, which I can't even fully pronounce, it's its special ability, but the ability has not been elaborated on. It's like such a mystical thing that hasn't been fully explored. But Wikipedia defines virulence as a pathogen or microorganism's ability to damage a host. That's so open to interpretation. But from an ecological standpoint, virulence is the loss of fitness induced by a parasite upon its host. So it's very, I, I don't know, if someone wants to explain that more down below. But Nikika is often considered like the strongest kaiju or not the strongest the smartest by far like she she tricked the monarch systems to get out of her containment and all that kind of stuff i'm going to assume that an incredibly intelligent octopus one of the most intelligent kaiju by far and something that has abilities we don't fully understand once it gets a hold of a monkey in the water it's going to be a disaster but we don't know enough about the bastard yet so he's going under demigod Methuselah, or Methuselah, the kaiju who I can't fully pronounce because it only appears for like four seconds, its main ability is listed as durability. Its main trait is it could take a beating. I legitimately don't know how a monkey's gonna kill this thing. I think if it rampages, the monkey would die, but we really don't know much about this kaiju whatsoever. But it looks damn near virtually instructable. In indestructible, I mean. But it also looks like it can't really do a lot of damage. You belong in demigod so much. Amulak, Amulak, that other name I could barely pronounce. This creature can controls like freaking plant life through supernatural abilities it's, it's it's the most nonsense kaiju in the entire franchise it effortlessly beats up behemoth but godzilla decimates it really quickly so a giant plant monster that controls plants and other kind of stuff like that i feel like this would actually be a great fight for one of the monkeys one of the best possible fights squared up like it's it's a total win or lose situation you know what Usually, I'd put this creature under god or demigod because it's freaking astounding, but against an ape, I don't know, a rampaging pissed off ape, I'm gonna go ahead and put it under monster. I think that's, it's just a battle of brute strength versus brute strength at that point. And monkeys are all about brute strength. Okay, Evolve Godzilla's Spiral Beam, the big epic atomic breath at the end of Godzilla X-Kong, that's an easy god. That would vaporize any monkey in seconds. Female Muto's EMP, virtually harmless against a monkey. It's not gonna do anything. You go under monster, buddy. Shimo's frost beam that causes ice ages and just instantly froze Goji in seconds would decimate the crap out of any monkey. These last ones are pretty easy. Oh, shit. 
Monster Zero's gravity beam. We never see it against a monkey. We never do. But you got to imagine it's like along the scales of power as atomic breath or something like that. Like it pushes Godzilla back decently. It's got a lot of power behind it. It vaporizes freaking uh, Mothra. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put that under God as well. Okay, male Muto's EMP. Another useless factor in this fight. Tiamat's hydrokinesis, kinesis, the ability to control water, how it could make those giant cyclones and like travel in the cyclones across the world and stuff like that, even over land masses, which is very, uh, very cool. But on land, then it's any man's fight. In the water, Tiamat would vaporize those monkeys. We're just going to assume this fight's in the water because it's a sea monster. Tiamat is one of the most powerful kaiju ever in the monsterverse. It got so disrespected in that movie. I feel like legitimately this thing would decimate a monkey. In the comics, it almost kills Godzilla, but Godzilla wasn't able to use his atomic breath at that moment. So just in a melee fight, it was killing the crap out of Godzilla. So that's like, that just goes to show its strength, you know? That's where I arrived at that conclusion. Okay, Scylla's mucus webbing. I don't think she's beating a monkey. I don't, <laughs> I don't think she could beat the raw strength of a pissed off ape, you know? She's going under monster. I'm sorry, but that's just happening. Then we have Nate Nacri secretion, Nacri secretion. I don't even know how to say it. That gross crap the Ion Dragon spits out in the Monarch TV show that momentarily blinds Godzilla. That's just going to piss off a monkey. A monkey might even eat it. It might enjoy eating that crap. Kong always eats people's gross, disgusting, like dripping heads. They might love it. The Ion Dragon would get decimated by a Kong just like it got decimated by Godzilla. Not as easily because they're not Godzilla, but the Ion Dragon isn't that special. Those wings came right off and like Godzilla doesn't have the strongest arms. So this is my list of all the epic kaiju powers and abilities we see in the MonsterVerse and how they would absolutely decimate your average Kong Hollow Earth monkey. I'd actually kill to see some of these kaiju go up against those monkeys in some of the next movies because it'd be really cool to see some of them just get freaking cut in half and mangled and destroyed and swallowed. I'd love it. Most of them were holes anyways. But yes, let me know what you guys think down below. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>